Hello and welcome to Orient Today. I'm Joe Johnson and I'm joined this week by Marco Iofredi. Welcome, Marco. Thank you, thank you. That was a very happy song. <laughs> it is. Marco uh, recently wrapped up an internship with us, but he's still sticking around. How would you describe your internship uh, experience? Well, that question's never really going to leave me, is it? Uh, <laughs> well, when I walked in for the tour, Ian said, uh, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn a lot from wrapping a cord to shooting a video camera, and I sure have. I've learned everything. You know, everything that I was told that I would learn, I've, I've learned, and I'd... Uh, I would recommend this internship. It went by quickly, and yeah. uh, it, you decided this is what you want to do for a career. What's what's next in your career path? Well, I'd like to hit Detroit, mm -hmm. you know, as a broadcast journalist. Even if I have to stake out like a you know a news outlet, just you know, hang around the area and make sure my presence is known. Mm -hmm. You know, that's if they keep rejecting me. You know, I'm serious about this. Great, so, yeah, we yeah. got a, a great demo reel out of it, and uh, yeah, good luck to you. So. New thing for your demo reel, live television, uh, talk show host, there's nothing you can't do. Yeah, if, and if you get an internship here, you get to shadow Joe, so <laughs> <That's right. laughs> it's a ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's not one of the perks of the job. But uh, speaking of ONTV and internships, uh, we just had a really big event happen recently, uh, and it's the first time we were able to get back to it in several years because of COVID. Uh, but recently, ONTV hosted its uh, Volunteer Appreciation Banquet. You were there. Did you have a good time at the banquet? I did, yeah. Even though I sucked at bocce, I had a good time. Yeah. <laughs> it was at Palazzo de Bocce for the first time. Great food, lots of fun. Uh, we had a little award ceremony, and then we played some bocce ball uh, during the night. Uh, I realized uh, I discovered uh, yet another sport that I'm terrible at, um, but I had fun. Uh, it's weird, like, getting the hang of, of the weight of the bocce ball, and the first time you throw it, it just sails all the way to the back, and then you try to take some off of it, and it barely goes anywhere. So you got to find that happy medium uh, to try and get it next to the Polino. And, yeah, it was a lot of fun. That was kind of a first for me. Yeah, yeah um, it's, it's real rough. Ever since, ever since I was a kid, I've been playing it, but it's always on the grass. Yeah, exactly. You know, when I get in here, you got to throw it up in the air really high, get the bounce, you know, to slow it down. You know, there's a lot of different ways you can slow it down, but it's, it's very difficult. Yeah. yeah. So, like I said, we also had an award ceremony, and uh, there's the Balaneckis who are here helping out on the show today. They were named Volunteer of the Year. Uh, for their contributions in 2022. Well deserved, thanks to them for uh, all their help. And uh, Badranath Rao, who is the creator and host of um, Ideas and Insights, uh, he came to us with an idea for a show where he interviews professors from all over the world via Zoom. Uh, and then there's Tracy Woodrum, host of Ideas, or I'm sorry, host of Tea with Tracy. Uh, the podcast that she's been doing here at uh, ONTV for a couple of years. And again, she has people zoom in from all over. Uh, there's a group of scouts who uh, produce uh, Scouting on Air here at ONTV. They do a fantastic job. Uh, one of the highlights from last season is when they interviewed a family in Poland who were Ukraine uh, refugees. And so they do a really, really great job. So. Like I said, we had gotten away from it for a number of years. Uh, we're glad to be back in person to honor our volunteers because without volunteers, uh, ONTV wouldn't exist. We depend heavily on our volunteers to uh, create programming for our channel, and that's what we're all about. So congratulations to all the winners, and we hope you had fun playing bocce ball and having some good food. And uh, we're looking forward to a great 2023, and we're looking forward to doing it all over again. Uh, next year so uh, yeah that was a lot of fun so uh, also some other things going on um, yeah th this past Saturday was Earth Day and uh, you wouldn't know it from the weather it was just so miserable this past weekend with it sure was rain and cold um, but Saturday was Earth Day and usually to coincide with Earth Day Orion Township hosts the Orion Green Up where volunteers and families will uh, be assigned locations and go throughout Orion Township to do some spring cleaning. So on Friday night, the 21st, uh, they, this is the first time they've done something like this where they, they gathered at Camp Agawam uh, on Friday evening, had a barbecue, had games, 
and assigned uh, families cleanup locations. And then the families were decide or, or decided their own schedule. They were they decided to when they got their location to clean up at their leisure. So they could have done it the weekend. They could have done it all this week. Uh, so that's kind of a new twist on the Orient Green Up is that they're given more time to do their cleanup. But it's really great to see families come out who care about this community, care about this environment, uh, go out there and try and clean things up. Yeah, what that sounds like to me, Joe, is they're going to organize into cliques like high school and clean up all the <laughs> place. You know. <laughs> Uh, they also planted a tree at Camp Agawam. That's something that they do every year. Uh, probably one of the toughest areas that um, volunteers focus on is over by Joslin and Brown Road, over where the shopping plazas are over there. That just gets bad every winter. So there's a group of volunteers who will uh, go out there and try to clean that up. But isn't it great to see the little kids out there and uh, they're learning early on about taking care of their environment. That's uh, yeah, it is that's really pretty cool. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so that was really neat to see and hopefully there'll be families out all this week uh, cleaning up uh, Orient Township and planting trees. I heard that they were going to be doing some cleanups over by the library and that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. nice way to celebrate Earth Day. And uh, something else that just happened recently is uh, Lake Orion Community Schools hosted an event for the first time ever it's called the Safety Summit. And uh, we, we found out about it at the last minute and I ran over there with a camera. And in the lobby of the Performing Arts Center of the high school, they had uh, tables set up uh, where these community groups talked about what they're doing to try and keep Lake Orion schools safe. There were organizations like Orion Area Youth Assistance and, and uh, the OACC, I believe it's called. Um, but all, all different types of community groups were there. And uh, it was really great to uh, see that. And then inside the auditorium, there were representatives of the Oakland County Sheriff's Department and uh, the Lake Orion Police Department. And they all gave presentations on what they're doing to try and keep schools safe. Um, as you know, there's been a, a rash of, of shootings, including some school shootings in Tennessee. And uh, one thing that jumped out at me as I was watching their presentation is, you know, how, to, how do you slow down the entry of a gunman who's determined to get into the school? And they said what they're looking at doing is putting some sort of a film over all the entryways at all the schools, which will keep the glass from shattering because that's how the, the gunman got in uh, at that school in Nashville where she just, or he just shot out the uh, glass at the school and walked yeah, right in. Even the Covenant shooting, they shot the glass too. Now that's becoming a trademark. Yeah, so you know they say, well, keep the doors locked, you can't get in. And they prove that that's uh, easier said than done. So, exactly. So there's, they're looking at all different options to try and keep Lake Orion schools safer for the uh, students. And, yeah. Uh, that's a great thing because, uh, you know, after what happened in Oxford and, and all over the country, uh, state, you want to give state. the students and parents peace of mind. Yeah, and finally that they're, they're getting together too, you know, they're uniting everybody. Yeah. You know, the, only, the first step in solving this is unite the community, right? Yeah. So, you know, we're in stepping in the right direction, I would say. Yeah, and that's what seems to be happening. So, um, so good things happening in the community. Um, also, something that uh, is coming up that we want to make sure that you support is starting on Thursday and running through Friday and Saturday, Lake Orion High School uh, is, uh, the curtain is going up on their spring production. And this year they're going to be doing a high school musical. And it's the first time that the school has done a large ensemble production, again, because of COVID. Uh, so it's a huge cast. They've been rehearsing for a couple of months. The title was decided way back in February. They held auditions and now they're in rehearsal. So I had a chance to stop in at the rehearsals last week to see how things were coming along, meet some of the stars. You know how I love meeting celebrities. Sure do. And uh, <laughs> so let's take a little sneak peek at uh, the high school's production of High School Musical. Things are ramping up over at Lake Orion High School's Performing Arts Center as Thespian Troupe 2898 is knee-deep in rehearsals for Disney's High School Musical. The production was selected in February, and director Elizabeth Morton described her reaction to the level of talent that came out to audition. A 
oh, I was blown away. <laughs> I did not know what to expect. Um, I've dealt with children. I've done peanut gallery players before through Meadowbrook Theater, um, and I was absolutely blown away by the talent. And I think if you come out and see the show, you'll be blown away too. <laughs> High School Musical premiered on the Disney Channel in 2006 and starred Zac Efron, Vanessa Hutchins, and Ashley Tisdale. The Romeo and Juliet inspired story tells the tale of basketball team captain Troy Bolton and transfer student Gabriela Montes, who try out for the school musical, as rival Sharpay Evans tries to thwart their efforts. I have not watched the original since the production has begun, um, but I have seen it plenty of times okay. prior, um, but I don't want to try and over-influence things, but I do find myself recalling things that happen specifically in the movie during rehearsals or when I'm saying lines. So it kind of just comes with it. I was super excited. We haven't done a Disney show in a while, and we definitely were all looking forward to it for publicity reasons. And personally, I just love Disney. I love High School Musical. Growing up, it was definitely a favorite. So when I saw My Name is Gabriella, it was definitely like a little girl's dream come true, and it was a, it was a very happy moment. Um, the audition process was really fun. They made it very um, enjoyable and just kind of carefree. And when I saw the cast list, I was elated because I was so happy to get the role of Sharpay. Um, that's what I was hoping for. Um, yes, I have seen performances of it, and I do incorporate some of it into my performance just because Sharpay is a very different person than I am myself. But um, I also do like to put my own little spin on it just because I'm also like a different Sharpay than the one in the movie or in the musical. High School Musical is the first large ensemble production to be performed at the high school since COVID shut things down in 2020. Everyone involved is excited about the production and encourages the community to come see it at the end of April. We have a smashing creative team. Uh, we are boasting a three-story set right now, a usable three-story set, uh, designed by Chris O'Meara, who actually I went to college with, so it's been kind of fun to create with him again. Um, we definitely pride ourselves in New York style and New York level um, expectations. The students have been very hard at work doing character development. And that's what's so great about High School Musical is that it is a true ensemble show. It's a lot of group numbers, um, especially because we're doing the one act version, so there's no intermission. So they kind of cut out all the fluff in it and kind of just went to the big numbers and the big moments. I would encourage people to come see the show because there's nothing to be afraid of. Most people know the story. They've seen it before. It's fun. It's going to be just a big party the entire time. It's a story that if you don't know it, it's easy to follow. There's no crazy twists or turns and it, you're going to be smiling at the end. You're going to want to sing along, clap along with the songs. It's just to feel good. You get some good music, you get dancing, and it's a great way to spend um, either a Thursday, Friday, or Saturday night. You can expect opening night to come in and have just a lot of fun. Obviously, like you said, there's a lot of people on that stage. They're going to try to get you excited about it. It's a Disney show. It's going to bring back some nostalgia. It's going to bring back some memories. And it's definitely something that I think everybody should come see and have a good time. I would say come out and see it, obviously, to support our theater troupe, but also because we've put so much work into it, and it's just coming to be a wonderful show, and our set is like the best set that I've seen in our four years, and it's just, it's a really fun time, and it's like a lot of people know the music already, so it's like you can sing along, and it's just, it's a really fun time. Yeah, it's going to be great. Definitely a family show, like if you want to come with your family or by yourself. It's definitely just a way to spend your night and just have some fun and just have some entertainment if you're looking for something else that you don't really see every day. The curtain goes up on High School Musical on Thursday, April 27th at 7 p.m. There are also performances on Friday, April 28th and Saturday, April 29th. To purchase tickets, visit payschoolevents.com. At Lake Orion High School, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. So again, uh, the, the musical is going to be opening on Thursday and running through Friday and Saturday, and they're going to do some special performances for, I think, 
elementary school kids or something like that. Um, but yeah, I really recommend that you go check it out. Uh, it's kind of funny, when uh, I heard they were doing a high school musical, I thought, wow, didn't that just come out just a few years ago? And then I looked it up. 17 years ago, High School Musical premiered on the Disney Channel, so I can't believe it's been that long. Uh, but be sure to support uh, the local thespian troupe at the high school and go check out High School Musical this weekend. Now I am joined by some representatives of Young Life. Uh, first of all, let's start with introductions. Introduce yourself. Hello there, my name is Eddie Cromwell. I'm in 12th grade, I'm a senior at Lake Orion High School, and um, I've been a part of Young Life for four years, so since like freshman year. Wow, okay. Hello, I'm Scott Martin. I am a sophomore at Lake Orion High School, and I've been a part of Young Life for two years. And I'm Mihailo Janewski, and I'm a senior at Lake Orion High School, and me and Eddie have both been a part of it for four years. So tell us what Young Life is, and how did you get involved initially? Yeah, so Young Life is um, like a super cool thing. Um, it's held, or it can be held in like different places, but usually the like ideal gist of it is that um, Young Life's a group of kids that um, meet together, and there's like leaders involved too, and they're super great. And what we do is um, there's campaigners, and campaigners is like a Bible study group. We usually meet on um, Sunday nights, and then um, there's club, and club is basically like a hangout, and at that point, it's like super fun. There's games and stuff. We usually go to Culver's after, and that's like an outreach, and it's something that everyone can be involved with and bring their friends. And then there's camp, which is like super cool as well, and we usually go over the summer, and it's a lot of fun. So you found out about it when you were a freshman. How, did, how was it brought to your attention? How did you find out about this organization? Yeah, so um, my parents, they, um, they actually were in Colorado on a like whitewater rafting canoe trip, and our person like heading our canoe was involved in Colorado, and he was telling us about it, and I think the Lord just put on my parents' heart, we should start something like this in Lake Orion, and at that point, it was able to be started through like a parent committee, and I know Mihailo and Scott's parents are on the committee as well, and through that they were able to like hire leaders, and then um, Young Life was able to be born in Lake Orion. So your family helped create this chapter, I guess you would call it, here in Lake Orion? Yes. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. How did you find out about it? I found out about it. My mom, actually, his younger brother is one of my best friends, so my mom found out through that when I was uh, going into freshman year, and then my mom got in contact with his mom, and then that's how I found out about it. And I went one Sunday, and I didn't really like it at first, but when the first <laughs> club came around, I started to enjoy it more and more, and now it's such a cool place. Why did you get involved with it, and what do you get out of it? So I, me and Eddie were actually part of the first group of people to ever go. Wow. My parents also helped start it along with his parents. So, I mean, it's helped me in a lot of ways. Like, I've met so many people and a lot of friends through it, and even if it's you don't go for religious reasons, there's a lot of people that you can hang out with. And I know like a lot of my brother and a lot of his friends who go and it's like their whole friend group has, it's really helped them throughout high school, making a friend group and having people that they can always go to. Hmm. Yeah, you know, there's so much negativity in the world today that I'm always, you know, in search of positive things. Do you feel that's what this group offers is kind of a sanctuary where you can get together with positive people? Yes, for sure. And I think the cool thing is like it's like all the kids from like Lake Orion High School. And at that point it's like if you're able to like create a community at that point you are able to just go along with life or through life with people. It just makes that much better and it gives you hope and it's great in that way. That's awesome. One thing I want to add on to that real Go quick ahead. is um, I remember when we had the Oxford shooting, we, we actually had club that day, and we're swimmers, so we found out this was, we were supposed to have swim practice that day, and then we went to his house, and we were supposed to have our thing called club that day, and then that got canceled, and then we just hung out in the barn where we go to for the entire time, so, and that brought us, like, closer together, because that was a big moment that impacted, I think, us three here. That's awesome. So you meet every Tuesday at s the very specific time of 7.58 p.m. Where do you meet? Where's the location? So 
we meet actually at the Cromwell's house. They they have a, a big property at their house, and they we actually built or they built a barn at their house, and we meet at the barn every single week. And How many people you say make up the group right now? Every um, Tuesday we probably have around fifty to sixty people oh, wow. there, and then Sunday nights it's a smaller group, and we probably have like thirty people there. Okay. Wow, that's impressive. So you have a big fundraiser coming up. This sounds pretty darn entertaining. Uh, tell me about the Donut Dash 5K. Yes, yeah, so the Donut Dash 5K is, um, it's like the third annual, I believe, and at that point, um, there's a 5K run, and all the kids are able to, and parents, and grandparents. There's actually a 70 plus age group, if anyone who would like to be involved with that and there's, it's on April 20, or sorry, May 20th at eight o'clock, and it'll be at Yates Cider Mill, and the cool thing is that there's a lot of donuts there, <laughs> and donuts are so great, and especially after finishing a run, and a great way to reward yourself is with a donut, and <laughs> there are lots of donuts, which is super great, and then there'll be prizes given out to like the winners of like each age group, and then um, there will also be a winner of the best costume. So yeah, I saw here people are encouraged to dress in donut costumes. Have, has that happened? What are you seeing in uh, the past couple of years? Oh yes, it has happened. <laughs> and there have been some very quality <laughs> donut <laughs> costumes. <laughs> yes, yeah. My one friend even got um, sh like shorter shorts of donuts, which was uh, very festive. You know, I've never run a 5K, but I will have to admit that I might be inspired to run a 5K if there are donuts at the end. That's a great way to get you in there. Uh, and so it acts as a fundraiser. In what ways does this fundraiser help your organization? What types of things does your organization do in the community? So one of the big things that we have this year is every summer that we have, we have something, we have a camp that we go to. And this summer it's at Timberwolf Lodge up north. And a lot of kids go there and they bring their friends and a lot of the money goes to send these kids to camp who maybe don't have the money mm. or cannot pay for it. And and then it also go, goes towards our clubs that we do every Tuesday night and fundraising the fun things that we do there and mm -hmm. the, all the food that we bring. That's fantastic. So I'm, I'm guessing the location is what gave the 5K its name because it starts at Yates Cider Mill. That's how the 5K got its name. Yeah, I mean, it was super great that <laughs> they were able to like let us do it there. But yeah, it just it fits the name very well. That's yeah. awesome. Now, Canterbury Village is such a beautiful location. Does the 5K take place within Canterbury Village, or does it go out along Jocelyn Road? What's what's the course like? It starts like right next to Yates, I believe, like right there. There's like that little town area. It starts like at the very end of that, and then you go out like towards the road there. Yeah, and then you like turn left on Joslin, mm -hmm. like coming out of Yates, and then you'll go down like Joslin Road to like kind of like the dog park, and then at that yeah. point you can turn around and then um, make it back, and that'll be 3.1 miles. That's great. That's great. So, and so you mentioned you touched on uh, talk about the Young Life Camp at Timberwolf Lake. Elaborate a little bit more about that. So what do you know about that? I can I can do that. So it's like a big camp. I went to one last year, which is actually at Missouri, but it's where a bunch of like young life organizations, like from all around the U.S., uh, they're gonna come here to uh, Timberwolf and get to experience camp along with us, and we get to just meet new kids we've never met before from different young lives and see some kids we know as well, which is uh, super cool. And we do a lot of activities there. Where in Michigan is uh, Timberwolf Lake? It's... I don't know. Might have to use your map. Your yeah. Michigan um, I, I would <laughs> say, like, here, I oh, think, okay. maybe. Wow. It, okay. it is more north, <laughs> but, wow. yes. Yeah, and the cool thing is, like, the camp's, like, super great, and, like, honestly, it's, like, a very quality camp, too. It's not, like, your tents camping. Like, there's, like, lodges, and oh, wow. the food that they have is, like, really good, and I would say, like, even the dessert, <laughs> Quality. <laughs> and what types yeah. of things do you do? Is there, you know, boating, swimming, There's all that swimming sort of stuff? There's swimming at a beach. You can play volleyball. They have go-karts there. And then the swing is what it's called. Oh, yeah. There's a, yeah, giant, there's a giant swing. swing. Mm -hmm. Zip lining, basketball courts, foosball. Wow, lots it's of It's like 
rock wall climbing, everything that you can imagine they have there. So that takes place June 26th through July 1st, heading into 4th of July weekend there. So that sounds like a lot of fun. And so how many people do you expect to attend the camp? I mean, you said people are coming in from all over the country? I would say around four, or yeah, like 400, wow. I would say. That's yeah. fantastic. And then I think we're thinking we'll have like maybe around 30 to 40 kids will come from Lake Orion yeah. or even more, which is super cool. That's awesome. So if you were to try and uh, recruit more members to your organization, what would you say to them? Why would someone want to join Young Life? Um, I would say that they should join Young Life because there's something to knowing like that there's people who um, want to know about Jesus in your community and being able to like know that there's people who like want to know more about Jesus and just like need a friend. Mm -hmm. Young Life is like perfect for that and we have like leaders in Young Life and they're literally like the best like adult young adults that you could like ever have and they're like super cool to hang out with and honestly it's to the point where like my life wouldn't be the same if I didn't have Young Life and mm -hmm. I look at people different and it's it's such a great impact in my life and like I wouldn't have known Scott and I don't think I would have been as close to Mihail if I never had Young Life and it's just something that is near and dear to my heart and I just I mean from what I know there's Young Life in college so I'll be <laughs> involved with that. With it. That's yeah. great. What about mm -hmm. you guys what would you say to someone in Corinth to the join? Uh, I'd probably tell them around the same thing. I normally take my approach first with like club because that's to like start to bring people and then we want to get them to campaigners and then eventually try to get them with club to camp as well to sign them up there because they advertise it uh, every week. So I normally tell them like, hey, come to club. We're going to Culver's after. There's going to be fun activities there. And yeah. That's great. How about you? I mean, I would just grab my friends and ask them to hang out like any other regular day. Hey, do you want to go hang out? And then we'll go grab food after because who doesn't love food? So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would just approach it like a regular hangout because that's, that's what it is. We all just hang out and then go grab a bite to eat afterwards. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So if someone did want to get involved, uh, how do they go about doing it? You have website, social media, all that stuff? Um, yeah, so there's a Young Life Instagram page and um, with that, you can also sign up for the 5K and they'll be telling more about Young Life there too. And you can go to um, mi277 at Young Life Events slash Lake Orient Young Life. And at that point, you'll be able to get to learn more about what Young Life is. And it's super cool in that way. Great. Yeah, and I see here, uh, Lake Orient Young Life dot org. Uh, and you're also on Facebook, so they can get a hold of you that way too, right? Great. <coughs> Anything else you want to add before we wrap it up? The donut dash is fun, and <laughs> even if you can't run, you can walk, and it's that much greater. And there's so many people that you can meet there, and it's super cool in that way. Yeah, it's such a good time. I definitely recommend doing it. So you can meet new people, and you can walk it, and you still, either way, get a donut afterwards. So <laughs> it's Actually, worth it. You get multiple donuts. Oh, yeah. It's there not you just go. one donut. <laughs> so that's Saturday, May 20th, starting at 8 a.m. at Yates Cider Mill at Canterbury Village. Sounds like a good time. Let's hope the weather is nice by then, uh, not <laughs> snowing like it is right now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, guys, thanks for coming out. Thanks for sharing the message. And, yeah, thanks uh, for having good us. Good luck with the uh, donut dash. Thank yes, you. Thank you. All right. Coming up next, we have a little snippet from the Wildwood Summer Concert Series. Uh, that should be starting up fairly soon. We're probably still about a month away from Orion's uh, concerts in the parks. But um, as we've mentioned on this show before, we have the concerts at Wildwood Amphitheater and over at Children's Park in downtown Lake Orion. We have the Orion Live concerts there. Uh, we're going to leave you with a little bit of a snippet from uh, a band called Cast Iron Cornbread. And uh, enjoy that. And uh, thanks for coming, guys. Yep, thanks yep. for having yeah, us. Thank, thank you so you. much. Called Burning Inside. Another cast on Cornbread Original. I know you've all been in love at once upon a time. But when that man got to tell me, you won't tell me well. You say, hey, hey, hey,
Welcome back. We're sitting here with uh, Joan Sheridan. And I just learned that that was a general in the Civil War. Are, are you related to him? I am. Oh, wow, that's great. So, you know, your, your ancestry goes pretty far back in America then. I, yes, and he is uh, a character in American history for sure. It's very cool. So you are from Heritage Spinning and Weaving. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that? Heritage Spinning and Weaving um, is a retail store in downtown Lake Orion and it has been there since 2000 so this year we're celebrating 23 years and we have classes for spinning, knitting, weaving, crochet and we have all the tools and yarn for that. Wow, so uh, 23 years. Uh, could you tell me a little bit about the history behind those 23 years? How was, what was the origin like? Well, I couldn't find the supplies that I needed, so I said, I might as well provide them. So we grew from one room to the full uh, 3,000 square foot space, and um, we built a really warm community of crafters in downtown Lake Orion. I think people can really appreciate that, taking it upon yourself, being responsible, taking, uh, you know, being responsible for the community individually rather than relying on, you know, other supplies. I think that's very great. Um, so, where do you guys meet? Where do we meet? Yeah. Uh, Knit Michigan? In Knit Michigan, yeah. Knit Michigan has, um, uh, I started it in 2006 with another shop owner and Knit Michigan serves cancer patients. And we provide uh, a range of comfort items to hospitals around the state of Michigan. Mm. And um, I uh, am the founding director, but two years ago, the rain, I passed the reins on to the yarn stop, Sam and Mike at the yarn stop in Clawson, and now they meet there to make some of the items that we provide. Hmm. And you call them comfort items. Um, can you take us through a, uh, sure. a little bit on these? Um, one of the things that happens when you have chemo is that you lose your hair. And people don't realize that it hurts. It hurts when your hair falls out. So um, not only does it physically hurt, yep. but your um, sense of self is affected because you have no hair. Whether you're a man or a woman, it, it doesn't matter. And if it's a kid, it's even more important. So we make chemo caps out of very soft stuff. Um, these are cotton and they can be thrown in the washer and the dryer. We make them for men, women, and children. And um, the, uh, with two things that we really like and one is that they're soft and two is that they're attractive so um chemo caps very useful hmm. so yeah that's that sounds great to me because uh you know hair is is certainly a defining feature on everybody and, and when you lose it whether you shave your head willingly or you know whether you go through chemo you know you kind of look at yourself in a different way yeah, you don't feel so well either, and you 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 have a a pallor in your skin that just says, "I'm not healthy." So we try to make hats that are attractive and the right colors. Hmm. Yeah, and you also feel cold without it too. So it kind of a lot of these hats are used for sleeping at night because the house is colder at night. It, yeah, it sure does get cold. So yeah, there's. Lots of reasons that um, they provide comfort. Hmm. And uh, so, uh, how do you think the patients feel when they when they receive it and they go through, you know, using it? Uh, oh, let does it me help them. Let me read this little thing. It says, "Knit Michigan family, thank you for your kindness and generosity. My mom picked out a few beautiful hats from the basket at the cancer center. Her head got cold a lot." and your fun hats made her warm and feel cute. And uh, that's it, we, we get notes all the time from people that two patients will work together and play with the hats and try them on and choose 
the ones that will make them happy. Um, it's it's really important. Some of the other items, one of the one of my favorite ones that I, we've had cool stories about is this lightweight blanket. Again, when your hair falls out, your hair doesn't just fall out on your head, it falls out on your body as well. Right. And your skin gets sensitive. So we make these lightweight blankets and give them out in the infusion therapy room. And um, one story was that a, a young man, like 12, got one and he fell in love with it, but he was all the way back down to the car and he realized that he left it in the infusion center. And they went all the way back up, even though he'd been in infusion for three hours and got it because it, they're just, they're very comforting. Um, one of the things that we do in every one of our products, it says comfort item handmade by, and then the individual's name, because this is a person to person thing. It takes a long time to add the trim to the blankets or knit the hat. And people need to know that a real person did it. It's all volunteer. We also have a variety of pillows. This one is you know, for... I, I can see you're very passionate about this. No. Yeah, and you're getting very <laughs> emotional. To it. It, it must be very fulfilling to do what you do. It is. It makes a difference. And it's such an easy way, like these pillows. They're super easy to make. Even a beginner per can make them. I can do this? You could do this. <laughs> we could have you making these in a couple hours. You'd be whipping them out. This one has a funny shape. It's not for your head. It's for under your arm. Hmm. When you have a mastectomy, um, th there are tender in surgery scars, and this helps keep your arm from rubbing on the surgery site. So important pillow that goes with, we told you we were going to talk about breasts. Yes, and I told you that I'm very comfortable with this conversation. <laughs> so we make something called a knitted knocker, and they are to insert in your bra so that your clothes fit properly. Um, you go from having something to having next to nothing, and your clothes may be lopsided or um, just not fit right. And these are an easy way we give them to the patients with this little bag of fiber, the uh, different sizes they can choose. It says on the tag what size it is. And then they can stuff it to the extent that they need to stuff it. And then they can take the fiber out when they need to wash it. Mm. Um, medical prostheses are heavy and hot and um, patients really like these. Yeah, and you actually Let's call them see. knitted knockers. Knitted knockers. Yeah, that's a very funny and, name. But they can yeah. be crocheted as well. They don't just have to be knit. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else is here. We so you teach classes for this stuff too then? Um, yeah, sometimes. Mm -hmm. And our patterns are free on our website. You can stop in the store and you can get a free pattern and a free yarn. This one is for a crocheted hat. Um, are the classes taught uh, right there in the store? Um, we have events where mm. they come in to uh, take them, yes, right in the store. And there are 20 different collection centers around uh, the state, so different collection centers have different events. So it's, uh, it's, it's different at every event. Uh, so like, what would an, uh, an average typical event look like? Well, um, once a month, people gather together to have a bag, tag, stuff, sort party. And we send out boxes that are 18 inches square. And they are filled with a, a combination of all of these items. There are a couple other pillow size uh, kinds here. Um, plus everything that I showed you get a mix gets put in the box and we send between 10 and 20 of them a month which is really huge because everything that's made in them is made 
by a person at home on their own time, usually with their own dime, and uh, it's sent out to help somebody that they'll never meet. Hmm. And imagine they'd have just as much passion as, as you do working on this, this kind of thing here. So we, We've all lost somebody or had cancer ourselves, and you want to help, and this is a good way. It's beautiful. It's very beautiful. Yeah. I, uh, a long time ago, um, when I would work for my church as a volunteer, we would knit blankets for the needy. So that was very helpful, too. Um, I felt very fulfilled doing that. So It's an easy way to help somebody, and it's a good way. Mm -hmm. We call those prayer blankets. And just like those prayer blankets, you can knit prayers into these things. Yeah, so you were talking about how you send, uh, it, it says here you send five blankets, ten hats, six pairs of knitted crocheted knockers, and ten various pillows. So it's, uh, it's combined with all the events that you do have, and they're all different events, like you said, it, it sounds like a lot is getting out, a lot of output is happening because of this. More and more, as the word gets out of what we do, um, our donations have increased every year. Uh, we've been doing this for um, uh, three, four, seven, seventeen years. Hmm. So the more word gets out, and we send all the way across the state and all the way to the Keweenaw Peninsula. Wow. Yeah, huh. it, it truly is statewide. Yeah, that's great. Um, so where can people go to donate? Where can people go to reach uh, Knit Michigan? You can uh, donate uh, ready-made item, uh, donate items that you've made at any of the collection centers, including my shop in Lake Orion. You can go to knitmichigan.org and um, find patterns, and you can also find a donation button. It, it costs about $20 to mail each box by the time we pack it and um, buy the box and the postage. So there's always a need for um, money to support it, but it's an entirely volunteer organization and anybody can help and you don't need to have any crafting skills. Hmm. So wh what could you say to somebody who's uh, feeling reluctant or hesitant to donate? How could you motivate them? I don't think you have to look very far in your circle of friends to find somebody that has been affected by cancer. You may or may not even know it. And helping a friend, lending a hand, makes you feel good. Um, and it's a selfish thing to do in some ways because it does feel good to help others. Mm -hmm. yeah, you've said some very powerful things here today. Um, is, there any, is there anything else you'd like to say before we close up? Um, visit knitmichigan.org. There is an event that we're advertising for May 6th that will take place at the Yarn Stop in Clawson. Um, and that's a way to donate and have fun and see what it's all about. Okay, and they can find that on uh, the Knit Michigan website or any social media yes. that you're a part of? Okay. Well, thank you, Joan. Thank you. It was nice talking with you. Hey, thank you, Jenny. Uh, my name is Aaron Watley. I'm the director of Orion Township Parks and Rec, and I'm here uh, talking about some awesome things that we have going in the community. So, um, a few projects that kind of are wrapping up from last uh, season, 2022. We have our mountain biking course out at Friendship Park. There's two courses out there. One is uh, kind of a beginner intermediate area, or a beginner area where You'll get to learn the terrain, do some uh, smaller rock sections, and the other one is more of an intermediate, um, kind of a little more advanced area, and that's towards the back area where we have cool tabletops and bridges and rock gardens, 
uh, banking turns, great opportunity to get out there. Um, so it is technically open. We're waiting for the weather to get a little nicer before um, the ground to firm up and then you can get out there. We'll be also offering some classes uh, to learn how to do some mountain biking. Um, another project that's wrapping up is the fitness course over at Civic Center Park and it's an adult fitness course. Uh, technically kind of like a, a ninja warrior course very similar to that so kids can go out and play on the the great playground we replaced a few years ago and now the adults can get out there and do some exercise and have a little challenge course as well um, out at friendship park from last year we installed two pickleball courts one tennis court and so restoration work surrounding the grounds is happening this spring but the courts are open, ready to go. We'll be having leagues, free play, uh, great opportunity. The other uh, courses, multi-use courts, are out at Jesse Decker Park. Um, and these ones out at Friendship are designated for pickleball or tennis. So great opportunity. If you haven't played pickleball, make sure you get out and do it. Super fun. Um, a few projects for this year. We have, we just authorized the contract for the uh, beach expansion out of Camp Agawam. We're going to really start investing some dollars in the area. Um, so the beach expansion would be extending the beach about 50 feet to the south, adding a small retaining wall, um, just really utilizing that space a little better. Um, and then we also were looking at putting an accessible kayak launch in that area and then doing uh, some serious renovations to Peterson Lodge. So all told, um, if we're successful with our grant application, we're going to be putting close to $2.5 million into that area. At least we'll be uh, $1.5 million focused towards that area So for 2023. Um, a few other things. We did receive a grant. Uh, someone in our office, Chelsea, which you probably just heard from her. Uh, she's amazing. She applied for Oakland County uh, Senior Center grant for $250,000. And so we'll be doing a little bit of match dollars on that, but we'll be uh, activating an outdoor space at the Orient Center. It'll be a beautiful outdoor patio deck with uh, walkouts from our banquet room. Great area for weddings, outdoor space activities, classes, uh, great, great space. Um, and then Charity Pavilion just submitted a grant to the DNR. Uh, we'll be applying for $300,000 for renovating our Charity Pavilion out at Civic Center Park. So we'll be contributing some funds to that. We're optimistic that we can get that and really bring some accessibility to that uh, kind of outdated pavilion area. Um, last thing I would mention would be, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the Township Master Plan. So. We have been diligently working to complete all of the projects that the community wanted over the last uh, four or five years. And now it's another opportunity for the community to tell us the direction you want us to go. It is uh, really a, a roadmap for us to, uh, for programming, for capital outlay projects, for the direction trends, uh, what the community wants to see with your, your tax dollars. So, we work for you, and it's a great resource for us just to, uh, to constantly use it as a living document for where we're going to travel over the next five years. So keep an eye out for tons of opportunities to get your feedback in. Uh, feel free to stop by the Orient Center or Township Hall, give us some feedback. Um, a lot of opportunities coming in 2023. So. Whew, I think that's it. There's a lot more stuff happening. Those are just off the top of my head. Uh, but we really appreciate Orion's support. Uh, we're here for you. Make sure you get out. Use the trails, green space, recreation space. Um, thanks for all your support.
So as you can see, there's a lot going on in the community. Uh, thanks to Orient Township Parks and Rec, this is going to be their busy season with lots of stuff coming up quick. Uh, we're just about toward the end of our program. Uh, we want to, before we go, we want to make sure you get an update of the uh, sports schedule. Uh, that's going to start keeping us busy real soon with uh, baseball and softball and all sorts of things going on. So here's Joey Tysick with uh, Sports Update. Hello and welcome back to Lake Orion Sports Update. I'm your host, Joey Tysick, and today we're back as the spring sports season is in full swing and we take a look at track, lacrosse, and soccer. The Lake Orion boys lacrosse team is one of the best in the OAA and could be the best depending on how their upcoming games go. Their season started on March 22nd where they hosted Lakeland at home and were able to take care of business as they won 18-2. Then the guys would travel to Birmingham Seahome and Rochester Adams where they would continue their winning ways as they would beat Seahome 14-7 and then 13-7 over Adams. Then on April 13th, Lake Orion came back home for a game against Bloomfield Hills. Lake Orion was able to get on the board first with a goal just one minute into the game. Lake Orion continued the pressure as they also got their second and third goals before getting to the halfway point of the quarter. By the end of the first, Lake Orion had a 6-0 lead over the Blackhawks. It was more of the same in the second quarter as they scored another six goals, giving themselves the 12-0 lead at the half. With the hefty lead, the second half was a running clock, but it didn't slow LO down. They would end up winning the game 15-2. After the win, the Dragons would rattle off three more wins on the road against Brighton, Stony Creek, and Spring Lake. This means that now Lake Orion would match up against Clarkston for a battle of the undefeated teams and a lead in the OAA Red. We will give you the highlights of that one on the next episode. The Varsity Girls soccer team has also been in action lately, and they have a record of 4-2-1 on the season as they look to make another district title run. In their wins, they have had success at scoring on goal attempts, and in their losses, they have only given up one goal in each game. Both Oxford and Anchor Bay beat Lake Orion 1-0 so it is another strong defensive team for Lake Orion. Typically for these girls, if they can get the offense going, they will be tough to beat. The Lake Orion track season is in full swing, and on April 12th, they had the Oxford dual meet. Lake Orion would win 65 to 63 over Oxford, and team depth was key in this dual meet win, and it provided Coach McDonald with his first dual meet win as the varsity head coach. Senior Nick Eaton won the shot put in 45 feet one inch, and was second in the discus, 112 feet, two inches. In the high jump, junior Donovan Scott jumped five foot 10 for second place, and senior Jeremy Parks, five foot six, took third place. Senior Donovan Blackwell took third place in the long jump with a jump of 18, 8.75. The boys had a great day with several great efforts. Andrew Dracos secured first in both hurdle races, the 110 hurdles in 16.37 seconds, and in the 300 meter hurdles in 41.91. Raymond Payne won the 100 meter dash in 11.59 and anchored the winning 800 meter relay of Trey Pakmara, a nice pilot, Andrew Dracos in a time of 132.63. Sophomore Raymond Lucero took second place in the 1600 meter run in a time of 446.88. The 400 meter relay team of Trey Pakmara, Billy Roberson, a nice pilot, and Raymond Payne won 44.16. Senior Toby Archer secured second place in the 400 meter dash with a time of 56.42. Junior Ben Vandalin ran a season best 44.15 to take third place in the 300 meter hurdles. Oxford put up a great fight as both teams were evenly matched and the two point Dragon win is the tightest margin of victory for either team in years. The Dragons prevailed 65.63. Then, on April 19th, the Dragons would have their second dual meet against Rochester Adams. On a chilly day, both teams came to perform at a high level. Rochester Adams has been one of the top teams in the OAA Red Division for a number of years and showed their depth, taking the dual meet win at Dragon Stadium. Some highlight performances for the Dragons were put in by senior Nick Eaton, who won the shot put in 47 feet 0 inches and was also first in the discus, 144 foot and 1 inch. These are both season best marks. Senior Cole Tate tr contributed with a third place effort in 36 feet, seven inches in the shot. And in the high jump, junior Donovan Scott jumped five foot eight for first place and Jeremy Parks, five foot eight, took second place. Sophomore Alex Damiano completed the clean sweep in the high jump with a jump of five foot three. 
Senior Donovan Blackwell took second place in the long jump with a jump of 19 foot four. The boys had a great day with several solid efforts. Andrew Jacros secured first in the 300 meter hurdles in an area best 40 85. Raymond Payne won the 100 meter dash in 11 40. Sophomore Raymond Lucero took second place in the 1600 meter run in a time of 4 34 66. Senior Toby Archer secured third place in the 400 meter dash with a time of 55 77. Freshman Max Hoovner 206 took third place in the 800 meter run, and in the 200 meter dash, senior Nias Pilot ran 23-26 to take third place. The 3200 meter run was a clean sweep by the Dragons with juniors Sean Stein 10:28-91, senior Eddie Cromwell 10:30, and senior Ryan Murphy 10:33. The Dragons' next dual meet will be against Clarkson on the road. We'll have highlights and results of this and other meets on future episodes. For even more Lake Orient sports, check out our YouTube channel for our full game coverage. Visit YouTube.com and search for Orient Neighborhood Television. And also make sure to catch all of our replays Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m. along with Saturdays at 1 p.m. We'll see you next time. All right, thanks, Joey, for that sports update. Lots of stuff happening at the LOHS and the Dragons. Uh, before we wrap up for this episode, we want to give, give you a quick look at what's happening uh, on our upcoming calendar of events. Here's Becky with Quick Hits. The Lake Orion High School Theater Department presents Disney's High School Musical. Performances will take place this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 7 p.m. at the High School's Performing Arts Center. Tickets are $12 for adults and $10 for students and can be purchased at payschoolevents.com. Register your team for Orion Library's first ever Family Battle of the Books. An information meeting will be held on Saturday from 11 to noon. Be sure to get your team signed up before you arrive. You'll have one month to read five books. Register at orionlibrary.org. Mark your calendar for the Made in the Mittens Mother's Day Market. The market will take place on Saturday, May 6th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Orient Center. Start your Mother's Day shopping early with this one-of-a-kind arts and crafts show featuring distinctive and classic Made in the Michigan products. Register today for Young Life Donut Dash. The race will take place on Saturday, May 20th, beginning and ending at Yates Cider Mill at Canterbury Village. The date involves tons of family fun with lots of donuts. Register at lakeorian.younglife.org. Registration is also open for the Dragon Dash 5K. The race will take place on Sunday, May 21st. This 5K certified course begins and ends at the Orient Center located at 1335 Joslin Road. Check-in begins at 7.30 and the race begins at 9. All levels of runners and walkers are invited. Register today at runsignup.com. Well, it looks like we're going to be stuck in the 50s all week. Wednesday's forecast is calling for partly cloudy skies with a high 51 and low 34. Partly cloudy again on Thursday with a high 57 and low 39. Showers on Friday with a high 58 and low 36. Showers again on Saturday with a high 54 and low 47. And rain on Sunday with high 52 and low 40. Well, that's it for this week's Owen TV Quick It. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Becky, for that depressing weather report. Just about a week ago, I had the top down on my convertible, and now it's snowing and it's cold. Spring can't get here quickly enough. Yeah, You're looking now forward you got to another week, another two weeks, uh, yeah. keeping your top down. Exactly. So, uh, Michael, thanks for joining us. I uh, hope you had a good time uh, co-hosting. Sure did. Thanks for having me. All right. Hopefully, we'll have you back again soon. And thank you for watching Orient Today. We'll see you again in uh, about two weeks. Good night. <laughs>